Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to go through a question, or in fact two questions, um, from a exercise in the Pure Mathematics uh, P3 International A-Level Edexcel Pearson's textbook. And this is from Chapter 7, Exercise 7D, which is about integration. And it's question 2, Part B, and 2, Part I that I've been asked about. So I'll answer them both on this video, um, as they are very much related. It says, find the following integral. So here we have to find the integral of cos x squared 2x times cot 2x with respect to x. Okay, so we're dealing here with integrating some of the trig ratios. And the two integrals that we have to know, and we will not find anywhere mentioned um, either directly or um, you know, implicitly in the um, formula book, are the integral of, the, of sine x with respect to x and the integral of cosine x with respect to x. Those are the two that we have to know. Now, a lot of people get the signs mixed up with these, and so you have to be careful about this. If you just remember that the differential of sine x is cosine x, remember that one. The differential of sine x is positive cosine x. That means the integral of cosine x is positive sine x. Okay, um, plus c, of course. And, you know, the, if the differential of sine x is cosine x, we know that the differential of cosine x is negative sine x. That's the one that's a negative. The differential of cosine x is negative sine x. Therefore, the integral of sine x is negative cosine x. Okay, so you have to remember which way around those are, which one is positive, which is negative, and you'll be fine. Okay, I don't think we need that in this question, but that's, those are the two that are given to us, sorry, that are not given to us in the formula book. In the formula book, you will find the following, which is not actually the differentials, but, sorry, not the integrals, but the differentials. And we can deduce, of course, because we know that differentiation and integration are inverses, that if we go the other way around, these are the integrals of these. So if we have something that's sec squared x, when we integrate it, it becomes tan of x. If we integrate sec x tan x, we get secant of x. If we integrate cos x squared x, we get cot negative cot x. And if we integrate cos x cot x, we get negative cos x. We can deduce that from this information given in the formula book. So we have to try to look, first of all, is this one of the standard integrals? Is it one of the standard integrals? It kind of looks a bit like this, but it's not quite the same as this. All right, so if it's not one of the standard integrals, could we make it into one of the standard integrals? So we try to, for example, just re rewrite it maybe first. So we can say, all right, cos x squared 2x is the same as 1 over sine squared of 2x. And cot 2x is the same as um, cosine of 2x over the sine of 2x. Is there any way we can rewrite this somehow? So we will end up with one of these standard integrals. I don't think there is. Okay, I don't think there's any way of rewriting this in such a way. So that won't work. Okay, that's the first thing you should try to do because that that normally makes you makes life easy. If you can if you can break down to to one of these, we can just integrate it directly. But now we've got to look for another way of doing it. And in P3, what's left to us to do is basically to reverse the chain rule. Okay, that's the other type of integration that we have, reversing the chain rule. So we have to look for something that is in the form that it's the result of the chain rule having been applied when it was differentiated. And that is when you have a function inside another function. So you're looking for, for example, a function with another function inside it. And you're looking for it being multiplied by the differential of what's inside the inner function. That's when you differentiate something you like differentiate the main function and then you multiply by the difference of what's inside the function. So we're looking for something that looks like this. Okay, so if we look at these forms here, um, we're looking for something where outside the function is the difference of what's inside the function. So for example now, um, I know that um, if I take, for example, um, cos x squared 2x as the main function, okay, then if I take cos x squared x as the main, no, actually that won't work. If I take, I know that cos x squared x is the differential of cot x. So I know that this is the differential of this. But what function is this inside? 
this has to be inside a function. Right, then outside the function will be the differential of what's inside it. Well, I can rewrite this. I can think of this as, in this form, cosec squared 2x times, I can think of this as cot 2x to the power of 1 with respect to x. I can think of this inside a bracket to the power of 1. So you're going to, you know, you have this thing to the power of 1. That's the main function. Inside the function is cot 2x. And outside the function is the differential of what's inside the function. So that's one way I can think of it. I've also, I think I can think of this in another way as well, as the main function being cosec, cosec x cot x. And then outside the function being cosec x. I'll do that afterwards. I think there's two possible ways of answering this question, but let's go with this way first. All right, so I've, I've taken the main function as cot 2x to the power of 1, and I've put outside the function the differential of what's inside it. The differential of, um, that's going to be 2x, sorry, co cosec squared 2x. So outside the function is cosec squared 2x, which is of the form something, you know, when you differentiate cot 2x, you get something of this form. Okay, so how do you proceed with reversing the chain rule? What you do is, well, I like to write it as, as it is first. So I start writing it as it is, cosec squared 2x times. Now, in the main function here is something raised to the power of 1. So when you integrate something which is raised to the power of 1, you raise, increase the power. When it's raised to the power of something, you increase the power by 1. And then you divide by the new power. And then you also divide by the differential of what's inside the function. Now, the differential of cot 2x is negative 2 cosec squared 2x. Okay, negative 2 from the chain rule, negative cosec squared 2x. And we can see here, and we've got plus c, of course, once we differentiated it, and we can see here that the cosec squared 2x cancels out, and we're left with negative a quarter, and this would be cot we can write this now as cot squared 2x plus c. And there's our answer. And we can verify that that's the answer by differentiating this. If I take negative a quarter and I write this as cot of 2x squared, which is the same thing as that, um, and I differentiate this, I'm going to multiply by the power. So I'll have 2 times negative a quarter um, cot of 2x, take one from the power, then multiply by the difference of what's inside the function, which is negative 2 cosec, cosec squared 2x. So you have 2 times, you know, you've got negative times negative positive. You have two, 2 times 2, 4 over 4. They cancel out. So you're left with positive cot of 2x times cosec squared 2x. And that's exactly what we started with cot 2x cosec squared 2x. So we know when we differentiate this, we get what we started with. So this must be the integral of what we started with. Okay, so there's the answer for part B. Okay, I mentioned that we can do this in another way as well, which I'll, I'll actually show you here as well. I think, I think there's another way to do it as well. We can verify that also by differentiating the answer. So I'll just um, put this one on hold for a second. And I'll take this question and show you how to do it. I think in, there's also an um, alternative way. So let me go through that first. See, I can also think of this as the integral of cosec 2x times cosec 2x, that's cosec squared 2x, times cot 2x. Okay, and I can see that when I differentiate cosec x, I get minus cosec x cot x. So if I, diff if I take this as the main function, if I take the main function as this to the power of 1, something to the power of 1, then outside of the function is the differential of what's inside the function. Because the differential of cosec 2x gives us something related to cosec 2x cot 2x. So I could take this as the main function. So I'm going to have my cosec 2x cot 2x times this, which I then will raise to the power of 2 divide by the new power, which is 2, and multiply the denominator by the differential of what's inside the function, which is minus 2, because of the chain rule, um, cosec x cot x. Oh, sorry, cosec 2x cot 2x, sorry. Cosec 2x and cot 2x. So these cancel with those. And you've got your plus C. So this is going to give you 
Again, minus a quarter, but this time you're going to have cosec squared 2x plus c. Okay, so it looks like there's two possible answers for this. Minus a quarter cot squared 2x plus c and minus a quarter cosec squared 2x plus c. Um, two possible answers for the integral of this. Um, and how can we verify that we're correct? Let's differentiate this. If we differentiate this, we're going to have, um, if we think about it as minus a quarter um, cosec 2x squared. If you differentiate that, you multiply by the power, so you have 2 times minus a quarter, and then this one, you take one from the power, so you have cosec 2x to the power of 1, then multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. The differential of cosec 2x is minus 2 cosec 2x cot 2x. So you have 2, well you have minus and minus gives you positive, you'll have 4 over 4, so that all these cancel out to give you something positive. You have cosec 2x times cosec 2x, which is cosec squared 2x, and you have cot 2x. So you have exactly what we started with. So when you differentiate this, when you differentiate this, you get that. And also when you differentiate this, you also get the same thing. So it seems like, it seems like that this question has two possible answers. There's two possible ways of looking at this. I think the first way is easier, okay, spotting it in this format, but both of them are possible. Okay, so there's your answer to part B, and we're now going to go on to part I. Okay, now for part I, we're told to find the integral of, of this sine x, cosine x over the um, square root of cosine 2x plus 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as sine x, um, cosine x, um, times, and I'll write this as cosine 2x plus 3, to the power of negative a half, because we know that this is to the power of a half. I want to write it as a numerator, so I want to integrate all of this with respect to x. Okay, now, we have to remember, recognize this, what well, I mentioned, you have the, the main function, you have something inside the function, and outside it is the differential of what's inside the function. So here we can think of the main function as something to the power of negative a half. Now, what's the differential of cosine 2x? If I differentiate cosine 2x, with respect to x, I'm going to get minus 2 sine 2x. And I know that minus 2 sine 2x can be written in this form because using the double angle formula, sine 2x is the same as 2 sine x cosine x. So this is like minus 4 sine x cosine x. That's what this is equivalent to. So I have something of the right form. It doesn't matter about the sign or the, the constant. As long as this is of the right form of the differential of what's inside the function, I've got something like this. So I can use the reverse of the chain rule here again. So what I can do is I can write this as cosine 2x plus 3. All right, and I, I'll leave the sine x and cosine x outside. All right, now I have to add 1 to the power because this is the main function is something raised to the power of, of negative a half. If I add 1 to the power, I'm going to get power of a half. Then I have to divide by the new power, which is a half, and also by the differential of what's inside the function. And the differential of cosine 2x, as I said, is minus 2 sine 2x. And they cancel out. Those minus, those are half and the, and the minus a half. Okay, uh, minus 2, sorry. So now I'm left with sine x times cosine x times, I'll keep it like this, cosine 2x plus 3 to the power of a half over, and this is going to be negative 2 sine x cosine x, because sine 2x becomes 2 sine x cosine x. Now, and I've got, remember the plus c, of course. So the sine x cosine x cancels out, and I'm left with um, negative a half, and I've got, you know, cosine of 2x plus 3 to the power of a half plus c. Okay, and I can write this as negative a half times the square root of cosine 2x plus 3 plus c. And there's the answer to that question. And we can verify that we're correct by differentiating this again. So we have minus a half and write this again in this form, cosine 2x plus 3 to the power of a half. If I differentiate this, I'm going to multiply by the power, so I have minus a half 
um, times a half, so it'll be a half times minus a half, cosine 2x plus 3 in brackets to the power of negative a half because I have to take one from the power and then I multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. The differential of cosine 2x is minus 2 um, sine of 2x. So we're going to have here, um, we're going to have here minus a quarter um, cosine of 2x plus 3 to the power of negative a half um, times minus 2 sine x minus 4 sine x cosine x remember because this is just write it like this is minus 2 times 2 sine x cosine x so what happens is you're going to have minus a quarter times minus 4 which is 0 which is 1 basically so we're left with sine x times cosine x and we can write this in the denominator divided by and this is the square root of cosine 2x plus 3 and to the power of negative half becomes a square root underneath and that's my answer and that's exactly how we started the square root of sine x cosine x over cosine 2x plus 3 so we know that we're correct we know that this is the correct answer for part question 2 part i okay so it's all both these two parts of this question part b and part i were both based upon this reversing the chain rule spotting a function inside an, another function and outside it is a differential of the inner function okay so you got to spot that somehow in this case you got to spot it using the double angle formula that the differential of cosine 2x is minus 2 sine 2x and you know that sine 2x breaks up into sine x cosine x so it's of the right form it doesn't have to be this the right constant or the right sign in front of it but the right form and then we can use reversing of the chain rule okay so i hope that was clear and um, this is a very important um, topic here this uh, integration topic and this reversing the chain rule we'll learn in p4 um, other ways of solving a question like this and other questions we can't which we can't reverse the chain rule for by using something called substitution but if you can recognize this it makes life a lot quicker for you a lot easier okay so um, I hope that was clear thank you for watching other questions you might want to watch from this particular chapter of p3 and uh, questions i've answered from that you can find in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this region here other questions from integration of p3 in general um, past paper questions and others can be found in the playlist over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link thank you for watching and see you soon